Hello Python programmers. So in this video, we'll discuss how to create a Python program to replicate the popular red light green light games from Squid Games using Python. So for all those who don't know the rules of the game, let me visually explain this game to you. So all the players start from a starting line and they have to run towards the ending line. Sounds simple, but there's a catch at the ending line. There's a doll equipped with motion sensor. So what it does is it turns around for some time, sings a simple song, a child song, and you are allowed to run for this time period only. And as soon as this song ends, the doll turns back and the motion detection is activated. All the players have to freeze wherever they are. And if the doll detects a motion, the player is eliminated. Now the elimination process is pretty different in Squid Games, but we are not allowed to talk here on YouTube and I won't be adding that part in my game. Okay. Okay. So as we are aware of the rules of the game, now let's get to our editor and start writing our code. But before that, we have to install a few packages also. So let's do that first. Okay. So now we are into our editor. So first of all, we have to install a few packages. Actually, we have to install only two packages. First is uh, NumPy and second is OpenCV. Others come pre-installed with vanilla Python installation. So uh, Actually, you just have to install OpenCV. NumPy will be installed with OpenCV only. So you have to write uh, pip install OpenCV Python, press enter. It will take some time and uh, for me, it is already installed. So it's showing requirements already satisfied. Uh, now let me close this and explain to you how I have replicated the red light, green light game from Squid Games. So the rules are same. I have already written the code. The code is written here and I'll go step by step, feature by feature and explain to you how things are working. I will explain you every line, every parameter, everything. Okay. What is happening is as soon as the program is executed, a GUI will pop up on the screen, which will have the text start game. Actually, it will have a button saying start the game. You, you have to press that button to start the game. So first let's create that GUI. So we have imported the required packages here. We only need this package for now, Kinta, to create the GUI. So we'll import star or we'll import all the classes from Kinta. Then let's move down. Okay. So this is the GUI part. I'm creating a simple GUI. The task of this GUI to initiate the game. Okay. First, we have created the TK or the Kinter instance. The variable name is root. Then we have specified that what is the geometry, the height and width of our uh, GUI. This is uh, quite a big GUI. Actually, I've copy pasted it from one of my previous project. And uh, we have only one button here, only one widget here which is the button. It is created using this uh, button keyword. Then these are the parameters inside, uh, inside this uh, button class. First is root, the TK instance, the GUI on which we want this button. Then we have the text, the text present on this button. Then we have the command or the function that this button will trigger. Okay. So this function, uh, this button will trigger the first func function. I'll show you that what is inside. Actually, this is inside, but I'll explain you that what is inside this function. Then we have placed this button at x is equal to 120 and y is equal to 10. Okay, these are the coordinates. Then we have completed our GUI. So we'll write root dot main loop. Okay, so now our GUI is created and this GUI will have this button which will trigger this first fun function. So let's see what is inside this first fun function. Okay, so we are running two processes simultaneously. Okay. So first process is the motion detection. Okay. And second process is actually the ending game process. So we'll first start with the motion detection. I'll explain you the ending condition after that. So we are creating one thread for our NGUI. You just ignore this for now. So first of all, we have destroyed the previously created GUI, this uh, root GUI. We'll destroy this using this dot destroy class from Kinterm. Then this print is written because I was just checking whether this function is working or not. And uh, forget this threading for now. And uh, we are calling this detect function okay this detect function is actually function having all the motion detection part okay so let's go to the detect function okay so first of all we have specified a few variables here first is the delay now this delay is actually the time period for which you want the motion detection to work 
or the time you want the red light to be there okay so i am specifying 20 seconds here if you want one minute you can write 60 into one this part is just to make this variable dynamic then we have the close time okay so time dot time we have to import the time uh, library also here so time dot time will have the current time plus delay okay so current time plus delay this is the amount of time this function will work or this uh motion detection will work so let's move ahead now we have the cap variable which will store the data coming from the webcam okay so we are using cv2 dot video capture method now i have used this method for my multiple projects i have worked on open cv for many of my projects i'll provide playlist link below if you want you can visit and also by the way the, the source code of this project will be provided in the link in the description okay <laughs> the link in the description after this video you can copy paste the code from there okay but don't just blindly copy the code at least understand that what is happening okay so we got the uh, video from the webcam and it is stored in this cap variable okay so we are having two variables frame one and frame two and this is where the concept of motion detection starts so what is motion now we say that a object is in motion if there is a change in position from position 1 to position 2 in a specific period of time. I don't think so. You need more explanation of what motion is. I was actually explaining you the concept of motion so that you can understand why we are taking these two frames here. These two frames will be checked. If there is a change in position of any object, we can say that the motion happened and, there is, and if there is not, there is no motion. Okay, pretty simple. Then we are creating a infinite while loop which will run for the time the cap is open or the video is coming from the webcam okay then we'll create a diff variable so this diff variable will store the value of whether there is any difference between frame 1 and frame 2 we'll do this by using the dot absolute difference class from opencv and the two parameters of this class are frame 1 and frame 2 obviously we want to find the difference between these two frames and uh, after we got the difference we will convert it to grayscale so that the feature detection is easier we'll use dot cvt color class from opencv and the parameters are first the image you want to convert into grayscale and second is cv2 dot color bgr is blue green red this is the format which is coming from the webcam bgr to gray okay then after we have converted this image into grayscale we have to apply some blur also now blur is basically done to remove the noise and here we are using the gaussian blur so we are calling this uh, gaussian blur class gaussian blur class the first parameter is the gray image or the image you want to uh, blur then we have the size of the kernel okay now the kernel is a uh, pretty complex term let me try to explain it to you in simple words so kernel is basically a matrix that user has to define and kernel depends on the type of blur okay it's like a matrix like we have five by five five rows and five column matrix and the value decides how intense the blur will be okay more is the value more intense the blur will be then we have the value of sigma x now if you want me to create separate videos on these special classes of OpenCV, you can comment down below because these are very interesting and very useful classes of OpenCV. Okay, then we have to specify the threshold. So this thresh variable will store whether the movement has crossed a specific threshold value or not. And for this, we'll be using the CV2, uh, CV2 dot threshold. And these are the parameters. First is the image on which we want uh, the threshold to specify then we have maximum threshold value which is 20 here then we have sorry first is the minimum threshold value minimum is 20 and then we have the maximum threshold value which is 255 then we have the type of algorithm we will use for deciding the threshold here we have used the binary algorithm okay after we have uh, set the threshold now what we need to do is we need to dilate the image 
Dilation is basically done to prepare the image to find better contours. Contours are the position of movement. Okay, so we'll use CV2 dot dilate class, hai, and these are the parameters. First is the image that we want to dilate. Then we have the kernel of dilation, and then we have number of iterations. Okay, after we have dilated the image, we want to find the contours or find the position of movement. Okay. The area of movement. For this, we are using the find contours class, and these are the parameters. First is the dilated image on which we want to find the contours. Then we have mode of finding the contours. Okay, so this uh, algorithm is the mode of finding the contours. Then we have method of finding the contours. Okay, so this is the method of finding the contours. And the value stored in this uh, contours variable is actually a list. So we'll create a for loop for that for contour in contours. This is the contours variable. If cv2 dot contour area. So the area of contour, if it is less than 900, we can say that it's a noise. Okay, because sometimes even the noise can be detected as motion. So we don't want that. This is why we are specifying 900 as the limit of noise. So if it's less than 900, what we'll do is uh, this print function is just for me to check whether this uh, this condition is working or not. You don't need to write that. We'll simply continue with this uh, loop. Okay, this while loop. And we'll straight away jump to this uh, cv2.im show, which will show the uh, user the output the text is feed and the output image is frame one okay this frame one so this was the condition when there is no motion but if there is a motion then this condition will not be true this part will be skipped and we'll go to this part okay we have imported message box from kinta here so message box dot show show info we'll simply write you are eliminated okay so let me remove this uh, eliminated okay youtube is very specific to its uh, policies so the message box will show you are eliminated and os dot exit okay so what this os dot exit will do is it will totally terminate this program okay so as soon as you press on the ok button on this message box the program will be terminated all the processes all the threads everything will be closed so this was the motion detection part okay now if you remember we have specified a delay variable okay this is the time for which this while loop will run so how are we specifying the exit condition for this while loop so this is the exit condition here if time dot time which will get the current time is greater than the close time close time is the time for which this uh, motion detection will work we'll simply break this infinite loop or this while loop okay and uh, we also have this q button exit key just in case of emergency okay so after this while loop is uh, break we'll do cv2 dot destroy all windows and cap dot release okay so this will close all the windows and the video capture will be closed okay then we'll move to main loop function if this delay variable was specifying the red light time this main loop function will specify the green light time okay so this function was part of the red light part let's go to the green light part which is main loop function so main loop function pretty small it will have a infinite loop and uh, we'll simply have a 20 seconds delay which is the green light time and after this this detect function will be called again and red light time will start again okay so this was the part of main game of our motion detection main game okay if you remember back here in the first function we have two processes running simultaneously first i have explain to you the motion detection part and second is a separate thread for this we have called the threading library here so we have created a separate thread in this uh, ngui function and what this separate thread will do is it will create a gui that the user has to press to end this game and declare them as a winner okay so we have created this t variable here t variable is creating this thread and uh, we have started this t thread okay it will go to this ngui function 
and UI function will create a new Kintai GUI with root one and same jibber jabber here also. It is actually the same I have copy pasted here, but instead of the first function, this button will trigger finish game. Okay, everything is same. Only the Kinta instance variable name is changed and also this uh, function is changed. So this is the finish function. And this is the finish function. This finish function has two commands. First is to create the uh, message box using the message box class from Kinter and uh, it will show the message you want. Okay, as soon as you press uh, you press the OK button, OS dot exit or we'll terminate the program. Okay, so this was the code explanation of how to create the red light green light game from Squid Games using Python. The source code is provided with the link in the description. You can check it out from there. And if you are interested in more projects like these, some of them will be popping up on your screen. You can check them out if you want. And I'll meet you there. Bye-bye.